Howdy folks, wanted to give you another update on my Radiation King radio project. Uh, I've been working on this quite a bit, doing lots of optimizing and code work. Uh, so what I have over here now is a 3D printed mock-up of the, what the faceplate's going to look like. This is printed on a Formlabs Fuse 1, so I can have lots of really complex geometry. And then the knobs are now functional, so turn the radio off. Turn the radio on. The tuning knob works really well. It's nice and linear. There's no little micro stepping like you get with a stepper motor. So I'm using an air core motor now. I can turn the volume up. The volume is a uh, logarithmic. And of course, as as before, if you scan through the stations. You can actually scan pretty quickly and get nice little blips of audio. Uh, so some of the other things that I've been working on is uh, some fake vacuum tubes. Um, so these are just a vacuum tube that I got off eBay that I drilled a hole in. It doesn't mean I, uh, I violated and broke the vacuum in here. But that lets me put a NeoPixel below it to make it glow. Uh, this shows up a little bit red on camera, but it's actually a very accurate color. Looks pretty good. Now you might ask, why not use one real vacuum tube amplifier? Uh, I'm not going to be doing that in this project. Um, and then also, why not just make the vacuum tubes glow by applying power to them? Well, this is the exact same vacuum tube. And this is as much glow as you actually get out of the heater. That little element inside. So there's no actual glow to the outside. Uh, lots of people think that uh, vacuum tubes, you got that glow and that they uh, you know, all look like Nixie tubes and they don't. So what I'll have inside is just a couple fake uh, vacuum tubes or, or real vacuum tubes that I'm just uh, fakely lighting up. Um, so this mess of electronics over here is my prototype electronics. It's a complete mess. But what I have over here is a Pi Zero W, and then it's connected to a GPIO board here, or kind of a uh, board expansion. Uh, this is really just simple circuitry over here, just to handle the NeoPixels pull-ups for some of the reset switches and things I have. Uh, this is the motor controller, uh, which is a does a pulse width modulation and is a dual H bridge, and by doing that. It works best with the air core motor. And then over here is the Pi Pico. Pi Pico is doing the brunt of the analog to digital uh, conversion for the potentiometers. It's also handling the motor controller, the NeoPixels. It's actually handling almost everything that is not the audio. The Raspberry Pi is handling the audio. Um, then it's got a simple little bank of switches that are simulating the switches that would be on the front of the radio over here. Uh, so let me zoom out a little bit here. So I can rewind the songs. It's probably not the best song first. Let me switch stations here. So I can fast forward on the station, skip the songs. I can also, of course, switch the actual station that's playing. Play, pause. And if you hold this, it's going to randomize the actual radio station let's do. And then if you hold the, the next button, it's going to switch bands. And so by having virtual bands here, I can actually have more than 10 radio stations uh, across here. So let's see. Let me switch over to, let's see here. Which one am I on now? These are some of the mods from, from the games. I want to switch up to some of the... Uh, the different stations I've got here. So like this is this one here is nothing but blues. So find a station here, turn the volume up. And then I can also use the digital tuning to also skip bands by jumping to the next station and then it'll jump to the next band. And then as it switches bands here, 
It actually sweeps through. So there you can kind of hear how it skips all the way across the bands. So it picks these up really quickly. Let me skip off to another. Let's get back to the regular Fallout stations. Should be at the very beginning. I have on here probably about 15 different bands. There's over 5,000 uh, songs and uh, radio dramas and things all, all loaded on here now. All right, some other cool things that I've been working on is this guy. So this is the Zenith Space Command remote. This is a fully mechanical ultrasonic remote control. Getting this to work has been um, a real uh, learning experience. At first I tried to use an ultrasonic rangefinder that I hacked in order to try to bypass the digital, uh, not digital, the comparator part of the circuit. That sort of worked, uh, but what I ended up having to do was find a ultrasonic capable microphone. This is a PDM microphone, uh, and I designed this circuit board for it. It's just a nice little simple breakout board, and then the microphone's actually picked up on the back. And currently I have it set so that if I turn off the tuning mode here, it'll enable the ultrasonic remote. So I actually have the button's working. They don't work every time. I gotta work on some uh, some code for that. What this is doing is recording a sample and doing an FFT on it and actually detecting uh, the button frequency. Uh, so I need to do some, some code optimizations to get this to work every time, but it does work. I can turn up the volume. Uh, actually, in this case, it's gonna just turn off because I'm turning down the volume. Come on. Like I said, it doesn't work every single time. Of course, it's not gonna work when I'm showing it on video. But I do have all the buttons working for the most part. And so I have uh, basically uh, set up for, turn this back on, turn off, disable the, the remote. I have this set up for channel down, channel up, and if you get to the end of the station list, it'll go ahead and skip to the next band. And then volume down, volume up, and if you get to the minimum volume, it turns off. And if it's not on, when you press volume up, it'll turn on. Uh, so I wanted to kind of show the guts of this guy so that you can kind of see how this works. Um, turn down the radio. So inside here, I bought uh, two of these. Uh, one of them, I ended up buying a second one because I really actually wanted this orange button instead of the white button. But unfortunately, it seems like this one is a is an older, um, I say actually say newer revision of this remote because these actually are much more rounded off than on this remote. This, but it's also obviously in uh, much worse condition, so it might be rounded off just from use. Uh, so they didn't quite match when I put them back together. Uh, so these remotes date from the uh, 1950s, uh, but they've been they were made over quite a wide period of time, so I'm not sure the exact date for these particular remotes. Uh, but this technology was first introduced by Zenith, and it's the first multi-button remote control uh, besides the one that used a flashlight. Uh, this one actually uh, works the way you'd expect a remote to work, other than the fact that inside it is purely mechanical. So what it does, when you push a button, it's a little hammer pops up and smacks the bottom of this. So these guys actually ring and bounce. Um, kind of see it bouncing there if I hold. Uh, this one that's uh, is a little bit gummed up. Uh, apparently somebody got in here and put in a bunch of contact cement to try to stiffen these up, which made it work worse. I had to get in here and clean up a lot of that. Uh, on this guy, you can kind of see him vibrate quite a bit more. Now, of course, that, that's a visual vibration. The ultrasonic vibration is, is imperceivable. But what this does, literally sends out the ultrasonic signal. And so if I put my remote 
my unit into remote control mode, I can use the remote. Uh, let's see here. Turn that up. In this case, it turned off. It picked up the wrong button. So, like I said, there's there's only 1.5 kilohertz of, of separation between these. They don't hit the same frequency every time. It's even hit about three different frequencies. Come on, wake up. Of course, it's not going to work right. Make sure I'm in remote mode. There we go. So it's finicky to get working. It's really just for bragging rights. Obviously, in game, the radio does not have the ultrasonic remote. Um, but I'm still amazed that the Raspberry Pi over here is performing uh, the samples and the FFTs uh, so many times per second that it's actually picking up the ringing of, of the buttons four or five times. Um, I actually only check about once a second if the button got pressed because uh, you can't press these too fast. You actually press them too fast, they wear out, which is one reason I also had to buy the second one is that I actually wore this guy out during testing. Um, so still lots of work to go. What I'll show up here is that I have on the Raspberry Pi Pico, which is on the left side here, there's over 500 lines of code uh, all written in CircuitPython. And then on the Raspberry Pi, there's over a thousand lines of code. And so I'm doing lots of cool stuff with getting this audio to work live so that no matter what, when you tune onto a station, let's see, find the one that's got some dialogue or something. If I tune off, tune back on, it's always in the same place. Uh, the really cool part is the way I did that. It works even if the fast forward and rewind is active. Uh, so some stuff to work out, but I got this to the point now that uh, this giant mess of electronics is going to become uh, a much cleaner uh, PCB, uh, including the microphone on board. Uh, we'll see if running this microphone right between the speakers, because it's going to be speakers that are being mounted in the back right there, will uh, cause too much interference. Hopefully it won't. Um, it is only picking up... Uh, this microphone could pick up anywhere from 0 to 80 kilohertz, uh, but I'm only uh, interested in everything above 35, so I can probably filter out almost all the audio. So, lots more to go. Uh, I'm also working on, and then maybe I'll show some of that uh, here at the end of the file. I got a CAD model for this where I'm probably going to recreate the entire enclosure from scratch um, rather than going through and uh, trying to use that old radio that I got off eBay. Uh, I'm not interested in necessarily destroying the old radio, plus uh, it has a few quirks that don't make it game accurate where I can make something game accurate using this. Okay, folks, thanks for watching.